Well, here we are once again for our time of prayer and reflection. I hope that your week has been good and that you're looking forward to the weekend and catching up with friends and family. In all the busyness and the calm of your life, know that God adores you, loves you and wants only the best for you. Our reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Amen. Do you think that sometimes we overcomplicate things? I know I can. I did. As a technical manager and analyst at a big bank, I would hunt down the last anomaly, the one in a million outcome. Everything had to be right in the programs that we wrote and tested before they were promoted into the live environment. I was taught to seek perfection in this work. One comma, one full stop, or one letter out of place would have spelt disaster. The Jews in Jesus' time sought perfection in making and keeping hundreds of rules. And yet here we find Jesus summarising all those rules, all his teachings into one simple statement. Love others as I have loved you. Bert Bacharach wrote a song, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. And I agree with that, so it does. But not the romantic love that sets the heart aflutter. No, the love that Jesus is referring to is the same sacrificial, caring and compassionate love that he himself demonstrated each and every day that he walked the earth. It is a forgiving and unconditional love which loves and loves and loves. It is sufficient to teach about God's unconditional love. We always have to do that. But when we put restrictions on the kind of love we have for each other, then that's not God's unconditional love. A love that loves, if you will do this for me, or you will do that for me, is no love at all. Unconditional loves, because it does. And God's love for us is unconditional. And it cost him his son. Jesus demonstrated a sacrificial love. It is that kind of love that Jesus says that we have to love others with. There is nothing that we can do to make Jesus love us more. And there is nothing that we can do that will make him love us less. Imagine the power of unconditional love unleashed in our world today. Everyone loving everyone in the way that God loves them. What's not to love about that? Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, architect of the universe and lover of all, we come to you this day in anticipation of all that your love can achieve. Love that seeks the best for all. Love that seeks the lost and brings them home. Love that forgives and forgives and forgives again. Love that consoles the bereaved, heals the broken hearted, that can turn despair into hope and rise us up each new dawn. 
Lord, love is the key to all that you are and all that we can be. Unlock within us a wellspring of unconditional love that we might become for others, your disciples, and known by our capacity to love. And now, let's say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 